in television dude here and I'm gonna do something a little bit different today I'm going to list my top 50 favorite games of all time but in, in no particular order I don't think I could uh, rank a, a whole top 50 and put them in an order because I would say my top five top six games of all time I could consider all of them number one so that right there would be difficult and I will also mention a few games that almost made my cut I, I probably could have done a top 55 but I needed to end it somewhere so uh, a few NES sports games almost made the cut uh, NHL hockey no it's called ice hockey my bad ice hockey blades of steel RBA baseball Double Dribble almost made the cut too. Uh, some some other games like uh, Toe Jam and Earl, Panic, and Funkatron. Uh, if maybe five ten years ago, I probably would have added that to my favorite games of all time. But ever since I repurchased it, I I, I couldn't get into it the same way I did back then. May, I think it maybe it's it's lost its appeal with me. Uh, the game Flashback for the Genesis, a long time ago, that that, that would have made my cut. And uh, real close to making the cut was a game called uh, uh, Tough Man Contest for the Genesis. And I tried my best to put these in a random order. So I'm not showing, like, uh, all games from a certain system, or even all games from a certain series. I tried to do this so... So it's all random, <laughs> which is going to be really weird. So let's get started here. First up is Demon Attack in television or Atari 2600. Great game. Load Runner, a newcomer, a game I didn't own when I was younger, but I played it recently, and this is one heck of a game. I have some gameplay footage of that. Diner for the Intellivision. This ranks up there with my top three Intellivision games of all time. This game is really, really addicting. Sequel to Burger Time. Monster Rancher 2. This is uh, kind of like a Pokemon type of game. You have to raise a creature and you put it into battles. And I love this game. This had a unique feature that uh, uh, you can put uh, CDs in and you can make your own monsters. While some CDs had a rare monster, most of them had common monsters. But that was very unique. Body Slam Super Pro Wrestling. Would you believe that this game almost did not make the cut? This prob this was, was the last game I picked. Because while this game was one of the games I played the most back in the day, uh, since I repurchased it, I've only played it like once. And I, I haven't gotten back into it yet. But just for nostalgia reasons alone, and how epic the game is, and of the original in television games made back in the day this may be the most advanced now I would say some homebrews today may uh, come close to taking the, uh, the the taking that crown but back in the day this may have been the most advanced in television game pretty damn close if not gauntlet 4 not just gauntlet but gauntlet with a story and you have to go into the four towers and after you defeat the dragon in each tower then you go on to the the final tower and beat the dragon there with a cool uh, with a cool dual ending depending on which choice you make Grand Theft Auto 3 uh, this was the this was a game that I knew nothing about when I bought it or, or, or when I rented it back in the day 
It's like, what's this Grand Theft Auto stuff? And it just became the phenomenon and what it was. I like this game quite a bit. Uh, I will talk more about this game in a little in a little while. Okami, which is one of the newest games on this list, because I well, I heard about this game and I never played it. When I finally uh, bought it on a uh, impulse purchase, this became one of my favorite games of all time. This is in my top five, guaranteed. The uh, the Japanese. Uh, mythology and the the characters with the brushes it is Japanese not Chinese right I'm pretty sure it's Japanese you had, you had Japanese culture and you're the wolf and I, I don't need to explain it it's Okami I, I sound foolish explaining the game because I, I start mumbling Contra a game that I fell back in love with uh a funny story with this game is that uh well I did I did remember playing it back in the day with a friend of mine uh I would guess that 5 years ago 4 or 5 years ago I I got Contra with some games at a yard sale and without even playing the game I put it up on eBay cuz I found out it was worth money and after I put it up on eBay I started playing the game and there was already bids on the game, so it was going to have to be sold. But I fell in love with the game. And I was like, why am I selling this? So I had, guess what, after I sold it, I had to repurchase the game. <laughs> Crazy, huh? Thunder Castle. Also in my top in television games of all time. It's a maze-type game. First level, you got to kill the three dragons. Second level, you got to kill the three wizards. And the last level, you got to kill like three to five different uh, demons. Very cool, very addicting. Oh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Uh, this game is pretty damn epic for a Grand Theft Auto game. A lot more features than Grand Theft Auto 3. Uh, Vice City did not make the list. As great as it is, and, uh, you know, it's got Ray Liotta and everything. I, there's just something about it, about this one, I liked more. Uh, I don't want to get into a lot of detail. This video will probably go on for too long. Vice City is good, though, but I think I like this one better. Paper Mario, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Hold on a second while I get a drink. I can't say enough great things about this game. I'm in love with the Paper Mario games. All of them. This was the first one I ever played. And I bought it kind of on an impulse. I was like, a Mario RPG game, huh? And it's like, I would like to get into RPG games. And I'm kind of afraid to, but look, there's a Mario one. And I found a good deal on it. And I purchased it. And when I played it, it's like I was in another world. It was like a... Uh, uh, a fantasy world. It's like, it's, it's hard to explain, but it was just unreal. Unreal. Resident Evil 2. Arguably better than Resident Evil 1. But I, it's hard to say which one I like better. I think I might like one better because I like the mansion, the feel of a man, a haunted mansion. But this one really had some cool features to it especially on the uh, the zapping mode there's a a feature where uh where on your second playthrough the the B game there's there's this uh, X creature that that drops through and chases you through the police station and that is pretty intense <laughs> the first time playing that that was intense NHL 94 still arguably among retro fans, the best hockey game of all time. Debatable by some, but you'd be surprised the amount of people who, who still consider this the best hockey game of all time. 
Some might consider some of the NES ones better. Some may say NHL 95, 96, 97. I've heard arguments for all of them. But 94 is the one I owned back in the day, so. Oh, and I thought I put these in a random order, and I did not. Here, Here's Resident Evil, the first one. I'd say either one is great. You got the PS1 version and you got the GameCube version, the remake. They're both great. This just adds more levels. Uh, not more levels, but more more areas. More areas in the mansion. I think maybe more areas in under, other parts of the game. Adds a new feature where you have to burn the zombies or they come back. But it's hard to say which one is better. The first one is classic because of the bad voice acting. And I like bad B movies, so I'll, it, it, really, I think the first one's still a tad, tad, tad better. Let's see here. I want to pull these ones around over here. Astro Smash slash Astro Blast. Both great games. At first I was going to put them as uh, separate games on the list. But to make room for other games, I decided to combine them. Because are, they are, uh, while they are similar, they are kind of different since this one uses paddles and plays a little bit faster. But they're, they're, they're basically the same game. And it's, it's arguably which one's better. Depends on who you talk to. <laughs> Hold on here. Well, I get this one over here. Burger Time! And you know my love for Burger Time. I decided to show the French version. Le Hier de Baguette. And I probably pronounced that wrong, so if I insulted anybody, sorry. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't matter which burger version of Burger Time. You got the Coleco Vision version, you got the Beef Drop 7800 Homebrew. All three are great in their own way, and it's hard to pick one over the other. It really, excuse me, it really, really is. Mario, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. They took the RPG uh, games and did a little twist with them. Mario and Luigi this time, instead of just Mario and his partners, Luigi's his partner. And the tongue-in-cheek humor in this game is hard to it's hard to be topped. This is a classic, and would you believe that I almost didn't like this game the first time around. I had a hard time getting into it, but after I finally beat the game, I had this urge to play it again. When I played it my second time around, I loved it all the way through. It's 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 kind of funny. There's been some movies like that, too, where I saw a movie, and it's like, I don't know what I thought of the movie. Did I like it? Did I not like it? But then I can't get the movie out of my head for days on end, and I have to see it again. That means that it was a good movie. <laughs> and it, just, it just took something to, to make you like it and want to watch it again. And when you watch it the second time, you're like, damn, this movie is great. That reminds me of another game that almost made the list was Mario and Luigi Partners in Time. I think it's underrated, in my opinion. Some, uh, it got a lot of bad reviews saying it wasn't as good, but I quite liked it. But I had to stop this list somewhere. Sonic 2 for the Sega Genesis, the game that came with my Genesis. For a while, for a, at least a, a, a couple weeks, this was the only game I had for it. And I thought this game was unbelievable. The graphics at the time blew me away. I never seen anything like it. And the speed and everything, this still is one of my favorite games of all time. Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Definitely one of my favorite games of all time for any system, period. And I think the best Castlevania game ever. Well, uh, a game that almost made the cut was Aria of Sorrow, which I liked pretty damn good, but I liked Castlevania Symphony Night better. Nostalgia. 
nostalgia reasons alone. The uh, the fact that you had an upside down castle, and you thought the game was done, and it wasn't done. The music in this I love more than any other Castlevania game as well. So I could go on forever talking about that game. Baseball Stars for the NES. Uh, I think this is the best baseball game on the NES. It's arguable. There's a lot of great ones, though. A lot of great ga baseball games on the NES. That was one good thing about the NES. It had some of the best baseball games. There's like a dozen great baseball games for the NES. But this one I like because you could make your own team, make your own players. And you you can uh, you have to uh, make money to improve the players, and I have some cool uh, videos for that one. Tony Hawk Three. Uh, I think w I think when I bought my GameCube, this was one of the first games I got for it, if not the first game I got for it. And I fell in love with the Tony Hawk game. I thought 4 was pretty damn good too. I liked 4, but I think 3 I liked better. Some of the levels were pretty cool, like the airport and stuff. I really liked this one. I, I kind of... After 3 and then I played 4, I, d I didn't like none of the other ones. So hold on a second. Splatterhouse 3. I unfortunately I'm showing this ahead of time when I shouldn't be showing this ahead of time because I just recorded some gameplay footage and talked a little bit about this game uh, thanks to Cobra DVS for getting me this game I'll tell more of the story in a future video but this game is one of the coolest and goriest Genesis games probably not the goriest but the, the horror theme uh, to this game is pretty damn cool uh, what, what else can I say about this game? I want Splatterhouse 2 as well. Uh, I'm going to talk more about this later, so I'll leave it at that. Enduro! My favorite racing game on the Atari 2600. Uh, not really much to say. You're dodging traffic and going forward, but it's very, very addicting. I think I put it in my top three Atari 2600 games when I when I did that video. Slam Dunk Super Pro Basketball, arguably my favorite basketball game of all time. Double Dribble's pretty damn good. I have some others that people have told me that I should try, but I haven't tried yet. But Slam Dunk is pretty cool. Oh my God, my game's a little dusty. Uh oh. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you can draft your own players. Uh, my first video I ever did on YouTube was of this game. I think I re-uploaded it, didn't I? Or if I didn't re-upload it, I was going to re-upload it soon, all in one piece. I re-uploaded I re some of my older videos. Just can't remember if I did this one or not. I'll have to check on that. I, I may not have. may not have. Punch-Out! Who doesn't like Punch Out? King Hippo. You know, Bald Bull. It's a great boxing game. I still never beat it though. But it's just addicting. It's one of those games that you keep going back to year after year. Smackdown Shut Your Mouth. I debated on putting wrestling games in this list because I've kind of not into them as much as I used to be. But I probably played this one a hell of a lot back in the day. I created my own wrestlers. I probably downloaded some from the internet, though. I wasn't good at making them myself. But I like this one an awful, awful lot. The storylines were cool. Not much to say, but I really loved it. Beauty and the Beast, one of the better in television games. 
you could call a don Donkey Kong clone in a way, even though it's not really Donkey, it's not really an ape. He's more like a caveman type creature. You gotta save Tiny Mabel from Horrible Hank, and you're just climbing the building, going through the windows, the open windows. Real similar to Donkey Kong, but I think I actually like this better than Donkey Kong. Okami Den. Kind of like the sequel to Okami, but for the DS. Some love it, some don't. It's not Your wolf doesn't run as fast, and it's not as big of a game, and some people don't like the fact that you're going over some of the same areas as the first game. But I loved it. So that's good enough for me. I loved it. Felt like a, a worthy sequel to me. Mario Party 5. One of my more favorite Mario Party games. Uh, of the GameCube ones, anyway. Actually, five, uh, 4 and 6 didn't make the list. But, oh, I kind of gave that away. I, I should have saved that for later. <laughs> Actually, a lot of people like 6 better, but I liked 5 better. I, I like the, uh, the, the boards better. It's Mario Party. There's not really much to say. Herc's Adventures. I would like to call it underrated, but I don't know if it is underrated. Because it's just a great game. I don't know if enough people know about it, though. It was a classic back in the day. You play as Hercules, or Jason, or I think it's Athena. Is it Athena? Or is it... Uh... Let's see if it says on the back. Atlanta. Atlanta. I think Athena is in here, though. And it's got humor, lots of humor. It's a great uh, adventure game. You fight Medusa, there's aliens in it. <laughs> if you don't have it, you should get it. Road Rash 2, classic from back in the day. I really like this one back in the day. Uh, some people like one better. And I know of someone who does like one better. I believe his name is Cobra DVS. He likes Road Rash 1 better. But I didn't have one back in the day. And I haven't really had time to play it yet. So I haven't given myself time. I'll just say that. I have time, but I don't give myself time. But uh, 2 was pretty cool. And uh, if you're playing with a friend, it was hilarious back in the day. Especially if you, especially if you unlocked excuse me, the Wild Thing bike. Excuse me again. If you unlock the Wild Thing bike, that bike went faster than lightning. And it, when you crashed, you flew off the screen. And that was just the most hilarious thing in the world back then. Laughed my ass off at that game. Mario Party 2. This is the only Mario Party game I picked for the N64. Mario Party 1 is great. Mario Party 3 is great. But I like Mario Party 2 better. And I had to cut cut something, so I cut those two. I I like the boards better on Mario Party 2. Millipede. Oh, uh, where is it? Does it matter which version of Millipede? Could be the Atari 2600 version. Could be the NES version. I think I have on another version as well. They're both great. I like Centipede a little bit more, but Millipede is damn good. Not much to say, but it's Millipede. Centipede on steroids. World Championship Baseball for the Intellivision. One of my most favorite baseball games of all time. It's a classic, and I need to play it more. A lot better than any of the Atari uh, versions. I won't get into it. I think I have a video of it. Paper Mario. I actually played this after Thousand Year Door. So I kind of went backwards. But I kind of liked it better that way. It was, it was kind of like playing the prequel. It's kind of like how in some movies where you watch a movie, then they make a prequel. So I kind of like that. 
So I appreciated the uh, the simplistic the simplistic uh, I can't even say it simplicity of it, where it wasn't as as advanced, it wasn't as large, but I liked it nonetheless. Well, they're they're both fantasy based games. I I my way of describing it was was like Paper Mario was more like a more like a fairy tale adventure while the Thousand Year Door felt like more like an Indiana Jones type adventure but actual actuality is they both have a little bit of both but I think one has one I think uh yeah I think each one has one more of one of the other I can't talk. I just need to shut up. <laughs> Animal Crossing. I debated on this game as well, but a any game that I get that addicted to where it takes up almost every minute of my life for a few weeks or months and I can't stop playing deserves a spot in my top 50. I got hooked on it. I was trying to unlock everything. I had fun with it. I kind of went cold turkey on it. But I had a lot of fun playing that game. It's Animal Crossing. Mutant League Football. Yeah, this is a funny one. This is a game I've only played once. But I loved it so much, it made my top 50. I just did some gameplay of it. And it's going to be uploaded soon. Not sure how soon, but soon. The tongue-in-cheek humor. The it's not just football, but football with monsters, zombies, or dead people, and deaths, blood and guts, and booby traps on the field. It I, I I had a lot of fun with this. Too much fun that I want to play it some more. Mario Party Seven. I I I think I like this as my favorite GameCube Mario Party game. I really really like the boards. Five comes in second place. Six I thought was overrated, but actually according to most fans on the internet and and the message boards they like six better. But it's weird like that, huh? Miss Pac-Man. Doesn't matter which version. I think the 7800 version is better, but the Atari 2600 version is damn fun as well. It's Miss Pac-Man. Really not much to say. Beam Rider. A newcomer. Because I didn't own this game originally. But it's very, very addictive. addicting. And it came up twice in the uh, high score challenge at Atari Age. And I loved it both times. And I can't believe I didn't have this game back in the day, or, or or I'd be talking about it more. Underrated. WCW slash NWO Revenge. Hey, I just realized the game that I thought made my list but didn't. That was WCW Wrestling for the NES. I thought I put that in my list. I wonder what happened. I hope I counted 50 games here. I'll have to recheck the video later. I thought I wrote it down on my list, too. I thought I went over everything, but I guess I didn't. Uh, maybe I'll add this one to it, because it it's it's with this one anyway, because they're both WCW games. But uh, Of the N64 ones, I chose this one. While No Mercy was more advanced, WrestleMania 2000 was more advanced, uh, for a quick party game, this was the better game. Because when you did the, the Battle Royal with friends, like you overtop Battle Royal or, or fight in the crowd Battle Royal with 30 guys or whatever, this had a cool feature of like a quick match kind of mode where it only took like a a few submission modes uh, moves to finish a guy. One special move to finish a guy. It was a lot, uh, So it didn't take forever. Like a No Mercy if you did the same match, it, it could take an hour or two. <laughs> But in this one, you, you could be done in half the time. So you have fun, but you're not overdoing the fun. Super Mario Brothers. 
I'll be surprised at the amount of people who don't add this to their list. It's almost like a, some people consider it cliche to add this to your list. Because everybody adds this, because, you know, it's Mario Brothers. Everybody wants to think outside the box, and they never add this game to their list. But let's face it, Mario Brothers was influential. And when I seen it, I was blown away back in the day. My mother never got me an NES, but I got to play the game, though. I got to play the game a lot. I had friends who had NESs and things. So it's one of the first games I was able to beat on my own. So, classic. Super Mario RPG. And once again, I played this after I played the two Paper Mario games. So once again, I went backwards. A Thousand Year Door, Paper Mario, and then I played this. So I appreciated this game almost like a prequel again. And I liked it pretty damn... pretty damn good. And uh, I liked it better my third or fourth time through even more than I did the first time through. I appreciated the humor more this time than I did the other times. The humor in this is equal to the humor in Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. So, and it, it's just a great game, great RPG. Not much more to say about it. Yeah, just in case I screwed up and I only did 49 games, we'll count WCW Wrestling as that other game. If not, I guess it didn't make the cut. <laughs> Shark Shark for the Intellivision. Uh, yeah, it's a great game. I've done plenty of videos of it because I love it so much. You're eating fish, trying to get bigger to be the uh, the biggest fish. And you gotta, you can kill the shark, but you don't have to kill the shark. But it's for points, it's pretty much necessary. Centipede, my favorite Atari 2600 game. I like Millipede just as much, almost just as much, almost just as much. The Centipede is a classic, and I like this version of the best out of all the other versions I've played. Super Dodgeball. Very, very fun sports game. Not much to say, but it's dodgeball. But it's uh, it has a cool feature where you can throw the ball at like supersonic speed. I really loved it. It's one of the few games I was good at and I could actually beat back in the day. I loved that game. Super Puzzle Fighter Turbo. It's actually called Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. Was there a Super Puzzle Fighter 1? I don't think so. If there was, I didn't know about it. But this is a classic game. I, I think the 2 is to make fun of Street Fighter 2. Because it has Street Fighter uh, fighters in it. This is my favorite puzzle game. Some people like Tetris. Tetris is the king. I like this better. I think this doesn't get enough love. Some people push this off to the side. Uh, other puzzle games always get more recognition. Shadow Run. The f my first RPG, I guess, if you count this an RPG, it's an action RPG, but there's story and you talk to people, do jobs, and I think it's an RPG. And uh, I, I actually was able to beat this back in the day, surprisingly. I loved it. The, f the futuristic feel to the game was pretty damn awesome. Very, very underrated. And lastly, Hot Shots Golf 3. I put a lot of time into this game. Not just a golf game, but a golf game with attitude and humor. Some people like 4 better, but I do not. I like 3 better. 3, plus it's nostalgia. I played this game inside and out back in the day. I think I even have a video of it, me playing it drunk. <laughs> Foolish, huh? This is the last game, too. I think this is 50. I want to watch this video back to make sure I picked 50. So if I didn't, WCW Wrestling would be 50. If I picked 50, then it didn't make the cut, like I said. Uh, this is a 35-minute video, so I think we should end it here. It's not really a tag video, but heck, if you want to do something similar, hey, go for it. It would be a pretty damn cool video. Can you believe I did 50 games? 
At first I wanted to do like a top 10. Then I said, how about a top 20? But then I kept adding games. I kept adding games and I kept adding games. And I came up with 50 games. Hell, I probably could have done 60. But I had to end it somewhere. So that is my top 50 games of all time. My favorite. And probably ever revolving. Because there's still some games that I need to play that I hear are damn, damn awesome. So that's the end of this video. So thanks for watching.